Assalamu alaikum. Today we will talk about um, the second property that we have, which is called the ionization energy. The last time we talked about the atomic radius. Today we will talk about the ionization energy. So, what's the ionization energy? We know that. This is the nucleus, and there are electrons here in a certain energy level. There is a power of attraction that um, is constructed between the nucleus and the electrons. So the nucleus has an attraction force which grabs the electrons near to the nucleus according to the distance between them. Now, if this atom is to lose an electron, an extra amount of energy is needed so that it's more than this attraction force in order to let the nucleus let go of the electron. And this is the ionization energy. So, the ionization energy is the amount of energy needed to convert an atom into an ion with a positive charge, or in other words, a cation. So, cation is an ion with a positive charge, and an ion with a positive charge means that it's an atom and it lost an electron. For example, The magnesium atom contains 12 electrons. So, in order to convert this magnesium atom into a positive ion, its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, then 1, because it lost 1 electron. And because it's possible also to lose two electrons, three electrons, so there is a first ionization energy, which is the amount of energy needed in order to convert the atom into a positive ion. And there is a second ionization energy, which converts this Mg plus with the electronic configuration of 2, 8, 1. 2 mg plus 2 and plus 2 means that it lost two electrons from its original configuration so the electronic configuration of mg plus 2 will be 2 8 so this is the second ionization energy and the third ionization energy is the same the amount of energy needed to um, let the atom lose three electrons and so on. Now we shall know uh, some properties of this ionization energy. In the periodic table we knew from the last time that we go from left to right, the atomic radius of the elements decrease, and uh, this is in the periods. But if we go down the groups, we will notice that the atomic radius increases. This, have, this has some effects on the ionization energy. So in periods, the atomic radius decreases because the amount of the uh, positive at, uh, attraction force in the nucleus increases. And by decreasing the distance between the outermost electron and the nucleus, the attraction force between the nucleus and the electron will be high. 
So the amount of ionization energy needed to separate the electron from the nucleus will be uh, relatively higher. So there is an inversely proportional relation between the length of the radius and the amount of ionization energy needed. So here the radius is small and the ionization energy needed is great. But when the um, distance between the furthermost electron and the nucleus increases, the attraction force between them decreases and also the ionization energy needed. So the ionization energy is inversely proportional to the atomic radius. While in groups, the ionization energy decreases because adding an extra energy level as we go downwards increases the distance as we have just mentioned and this decreases the attraction force and also decreases the ionization energy. Another thing is in inert gases or in noble gases their outermost energy level is filled completely with electrons. For example, helium has an electron configuration of 2. So this is the first energy level. Its higher capacity of electrons is 2 electrons and it contains already 2 electrons. So taking an electron from helium in this stable state is very difficult and this needs to a very high ionization energy. And also neon, which contains two electrons in the first energy level and eight in the second. So the maximum capacity of the second energy level is already eight, so it's completely filled. And taking an electron from a completely filled stable energy level needs a very high ionization energy. And so are the other inert gases. The last thing is, is that the first ionization energy is less than the second ionization energy. And the second ionization energy is less than the third ionization energy. Because as we take an electron from um, an atom, this helps the atom to um, be nearer to the stable state. So when it becomes nearer to the stable state, it becomes harder to separate an extra electron from the atom or from the ion. So this needs more energy. For example, the magnesium ion which results from the magnesium atom. So if we have a magnesium atom and it's converted into a positive ion, so the first ionization energy in this case will be 737 kJ per mole. So this has a positive charge. Now, if this positive ion is converted into another ion which lost two electrons from the original state this is the second ionization energy and this will be positive 1450 kJ per mole now the electron configuration here was 2, 8, 2 and here was 2, 8, and 1. Now, here, this one is lost. And the electronic configuration is 2, 8. The same electronic configuration of neon, the inert gas. Now, in order to take an electron from the second 
completely filled energy level in its stable state, this needs a very high amount of energy, the third ionization energy, which equals 7,730 kilojoules per mole. So it's nearly 10 times the amount of energy needed to convert the atom into the positive ion. So the third ionization energy here is about 10 times of the first ionization energy. And it's also far more greater than the second ionization energy because it took an electron from a completely filled energy level. So that's why the first ionization energy is less than the second one and the second one is less than the third one and so on. So that's it for today and the next time we will talk about another property called the electron affinity and until then I thank you for watching and see you.